What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this afternoon. So what we're going to be covering in this update is a brief analysis on what we are seeing from the Ortex reported and estimated short interest and utilization data. Now, we were expecting to see a little bit of an increase in the estimated short interest, but we are not really seeing what we want to see out of the utilization right now, and there is most likely a very logical explanation for this. Then we we are going to move into the situation about Ken Griffin and Citadel lying about their involvement in the situation in which Robinhood cut off the buy button and marked a bunch of different securities position close only back in January. Now, I think some people are thinking of this in slightly the wrong way, but after the explanation that I'm going to give you guys throughout the remainder of this video, I think everybody's going to really see that what the main explanation of this is and what Ken Griffin could have potentially actually lied about is much, much worse than everybody thinks. Now, in addition to this, there's also a situation going on with the SEC charging two individuals with their trading history in meme stocks uh, back in January. So that's something that we definitely need to touch on as well. And then we also have some developments from the Fed. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And the more people that we have staying up to date on accurate AMC information, the stronger our community becomes. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So at the current time that I'm recording, AMC is trading at $39.70. Now, for AMC, this minus 0.75% day down about 35 cent, or 30 cents at the time that I'm recording is a very, very flat day. We haven't really seen the volatility that we were expecting going into this week. Now, the reason for that could be that the market in general is waiting to see what happens with all of these policy votes, like the infrastructure bill and that stopgap measure for the debt ceiling to see what happens going into the end of this week. And then we also have that Evergrande situation still looming. Now, when we come over to the Ortex page right here, we can see utilization went down slightly from that 88% number Number to 87.82%, but the short interest still very, very high at 20.4%, according to the estimates that Ortex is giving us. So again, what is most likely happening with the skyrocketing short interest and the decrease in the utilization? Well, these lending institutions are somehow finding a way to get their hands on more shares to loan out because utilization is just the amount of shares that institutions are willing to lend versus the amount of shares that they have already loaned out. Now, with the fact that the short interest is continuously increasing, eventually this utilization number will increase to those levels where we could see those potential for the four share recall significantly increase like we saw back in June. Now, when we come over to this article right here, this is something that I kind of want to get into and refresh everybody's minds about before we get into this current Ken Griffin Citadel situation. So right here, it also says Robinhood received an email from the National Securities Clearing Corporation indicating that Robinhood had a deficit of roughly $3 billion. But if you have been following this GameStop, AMC, Robinhood, Citadel, and all of these other potential bad actors over the last year in these short squeeze situations, you would know that Robinhood only had to put up $750 million out of that $3 billion, which was the initial request from the NSCC. Why? Now, when we think about what happened here, essentially, Robinhood, and this is confirmed by Vlad Tenev himself in one of Elon Musk's uh, clubhouse calls that was recorded, that they basically offered up retail investors wallets. They marked those uh, securities, AMC, GameStop, Nokia, and a lot of these other securities position close only, and that caused the share price of those securities to significantly decrease, lessening the burden on the clearing corporations and the brokers. So these institutions are not acting in the best interest of retail investors, but everybody should know that by now. Now, when we come over to this Citadel situation, we can see here when Robinhood and Citadel were taken to court by the retail 
retail investors, Citadel CEO was asked by U.S. Representative Juan Vargas under oath during the GameStop House hearing whether he had any communication with the Robinhood CEO, to which he replied straight face, let me be perfectly clear, absolutely not. Now, this question is worded a little bit differently than how it was asked in the actual video. So here's what actually happened. In this video right here, Juan Vargas basically asked Ken Griffin, did you put any pressure on Robinhood or any of these other institutions to turn off the buy button of these securities? Now, what he says is absolutely not. Now, he wasn't directly asked, did you have communication? And that's what a lot of people are pointing to to say that is what he lied about. But that's not necessarily what we're looking at here. Now, when we come down a little bit further, we can see here, uh, just an FYI, that Dan and I are joining Jim at 5 p.m. on a call with Citadel. This is really important. They reached out and wanted to speak this evening, and uh, we believe they will make some demands on limiting payment for order flow across the board. This is the big piece right here that I don't think a lot of people are fully understanding. Citadel wanted to limit payment for order flow. Why would they do this? They make a lot of money by paying for this order flow and paying uh, institutions and brokers like Robinhood for that order flow. So here's what happens when these orders get sent. So let's say that Citadel is buying a lot of these orders in this order flow from Robinhood. And what they do to execute a lot of these buy orders is they essentially enter into a short position. Uh, so they short the other side of the trade. Now, as the stock keeps running up, that short position that they have keeps going down, but the order flow that they are getting in continues to go up. So they are slowly and steadily building up this massive short position on these stocks that are running up that are being heavily traded by novice retail investors that are most likely trading on Robinhood. So what's happening here is that even though Citadel wanted to limit this payment for order flow situation, they could have potentially been so over leveraged on these short positions that that may have been why they were pressuring Robinhood to cut off the buy button. Now, we know for sure the NSCC deal with Robinhood, how basically Robinhood, as we said before, auctioned off retail investors' wallets to the National Securities Clearing Corporation in order to lessen the burden to themselves. But this piece right here about limiting payment for order flow is almost the bombshell in this whole situation that I don't think a lot of people are focusing on all that much. Now, I know that some of these concepts that we just went over are very confusing, so I just want to give a brief recap in the most simple terms that I can so that everybody understands and is on the same page. So when a market maker like Citadel receives these uh, the, these buy orders or this order flow from a broker like Robinhood, what they do in order to fill those orders is short. Now, what they can also do is they have a legal ability to do a version of naked shorting in order to make sure that they are providing enough liquidity to the market market in making sure a lot of these orders are getting filled. Now, with the amount of volume that was getting pushed into these stocks, if you remember just on AMC alone, AMC before the buy button got cut off had a volume that day of about 1.2 billion shares traded. That is a very significant amount. So in order to make sure all of those orders are getting filled, most likely there was a lot of naked shorting going on, which really trapped a lot of these institutions. And we can see here that everyone is, you wouldn't believe the convo we had with Citadel, total mess. These institutions had a very, very big problem and the manipulation that we have seen cannot continue. The SEC needs to step in and do something about this. And we actually have the SEC making some sort of move in terms of option chain regulation. So we can see here the US SEC charges individuals in meme stock options trading scheme. So we can see the SEC said Su Yun Gu devised a scheme to illegally profit off of so-called market, ma uh, market taker pricing offered by exchanges in which resting orders that provide liquidity by executing against other orders receive a rebate payment by trading options contract with himself using various brokers. Now, it de depending on if these are retail investors or institutions working for a big broker or a larger institution, we kind of have to put this aside and just look at what the SEC is doing. Yes, these individuals committed a crime and the SEC is going after them for what they have done. But what this is really doing is setting a precedent for the SEC to come after larger institutions that are manipulating and committing illegal acts on the option chain. Now, if we look at what they were actually trading, 
Gu and Lee chose put options on meme stocks that were far out of the money, meaning the strike price was well below the underlying stock price to trade against themselves because retail interest in those stocks was sending the prices higher, making put options less attractive. So what this allows you to do is almost guarantee the counterparty that you are trading with. And the way that they would make this money is that they would enter into these trades, receive a rebate from the exchange, and then close their trade. This is an illegal thing that you're really not allowed to do in terms of the wash sale rules. So let's see where this takes us. But this is a very interesting development and, and does show that the SEC is looking into these types of situations. Then when we come over here to unusual whales, this is a situation that we were talking about a couple of weeks ago that Fed Rosengren and Kaplan said that they were going to sell all of their stocks by September 30th due to ethics concerns. Now, Right after we saw those announcements, we saw some volatility in the market. We saw about a 3 to 4% correction in the overall stock market. And that was right around the time that these large individuals were trying to sell a lot of these securities. Now, what we're seeing here is that Fed's Rosengren will retire on September 30th. And this is basically due to a lot of these ethics concerns. Now, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that these individuals would be retiring due to these ethics concerns because of what they did back in March of 2020. A lot of these individuals knew what was coming, entered into short positions on a lot of the market, and made a boatload of money. So basically what we're seeing here is so much manipulation going on in our market. We need somebody to step in. Maybe it'll be the SEC. Maybe it will be retail investors that are going to show everybody once these squeeze take place, just how manipulated our broad markets are. So that is mainly going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in, in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones and see exactly which options I'm trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.